How's it going guys, Chris here, and today we're going to be checking out another Battlefield 1 They Shall Not Pass DLC weapon, the LaBelle Model 1886 for the Scout class. Now up until the year of 1886, black powder was the thing that made rifles go bang. It generated enough pressure behind a bullet to force it from the muzzle, causing it to whiz through the air and into anything or anyone unfortunate enough to be in its path. It was a key component for making guns work, but it had its problems. The black powder caused a lot of thick smoke, which restricted visibility on the battlefield, and basically made it harder to receive visual orders from commanders. Not to mention that it also signalled to the enemy the whereabouts of the shooter, which, as you could imagine, would have been an absolute nightmare for a sniper trying to stay hidden. So in 1884, the French came up with something revolutionary, smokeless powder, and it was only a matter of time until this new technology made its way into the world of weaponry. Two years later, the Fusil LaBelle Model 1886 came along utilising this new smokeless powder, and even though the rest of the rifle wasn't exactly anything special, it was instantly adopted by the French army the year later, and became a bit of a game changer, temporarily putting the French army ahead of the competition in the ongoing arms race. With weapon manufacturers constantly trying to outdo each other, it didn't take much to dethrone the LaBelle 1886. As other than the fact that it was the first rifle to use smokeless powder, it quickly became outdated. Despite being overshadowed by newer advancements in weaponry, the LaBelle rifle still had a pretty long service life, from 1887 right the way up to 1940. They were used throughout the Great War, with some even seeing action in World War II, and although some of its mechanics were a bit old fashioned, the LaBelle still went on to be an important asset to the French army, with about 3.45 million of them being produced overall. In Battlefield 1, the LaBelle Model 1886 is a Scout Class DLC weapon and there's two different variations, with those being the Infantry and the Sniper, but you'll have to complete a few challenges first to unlock them. The LaBelle deals a minimum damage of 80 up to 30 meters, which is where it'll start to increase, up to its maximum damage of 100 at 50 meters. This is where that sweet spot zone begins, right the way up to 87.5 meters. But beyond here, the damage will start to drop off, and once your enemy lies further than 127.5 meters, it's going to deal that minimum damage of 80 again. So if all of that stuff sounded a bit confusing, basically, if your enemy lies between 50 and 87.5 meters away from you, then the LaBelle is going to take them out in a single round. If they're not within said ranges, then it'll most likely take two, unless they've already taken a bit of damage first. It's generally the same kind of thing that most of the other scout rifles do, though the LaBelle's one hit kill zone starts about 10 meters further away than the SMLE's, though 10 meters before the Russian 1895, which sort of puts it in the middle of the two, meaning it's going to dish out more damage at medium ranges. With its sweet spot zone only lasting for 37.5 meters though, this means that it's one of the smallest, as it's only 2.5 meters larger than the SMLE's 35 meter zone. The gun fires at a rate of 56 RPM, which is exactly the same as the Russian 1895 infantry and sniper variants. It's not quite as snappy as the Gewehr M95, though it's a tiny bit faster than the others, which are all generally going to fire between 50 and 53 RPM. This slightly quicker rate of fire might not seem like a huge benefit, but in a showdown with another sniper, being able to shoot faster is always an important advantage. Now although the fire rate is on the quicker side, the LaBelle's muzzle velocity isn't, as it's actually got one of the slowest readings of just 720 meters per second. Because the LaBelle's bullets travel a tad slower than the likes of the Gewehr 98s and the M1903s, this is going to make it a bit harder to use over range, as you'll basically need to shoot in front of a moving player so that they're going to run into the path of that 8mm round. At medium distances, this usually won't be too much of an issue, though it might make the gun seem a bit more difficult to use at longer ranges, especially if you have trouble predicting your opponent's movements. The LaBelle can hold 8 rounds at a time. With most of the other rifles holding 5 rounds, this gives you 3 extra bullets to cause some additional damage, without the need to reload. A bigger ammo capacity is always a good thing, and if you put those 3 extra bullets in the right places, then they could potentially net you 3 extra kills. But despite being able to hold more ammo, that 8 round tube magazine also holds one of the LaBelle's most prominent downfalls. Unlike most of the other scout rifles which can reload using 5 round clips, the LaBelle has to reload each cartridge individually, which is going to take longer to do, especially if the gun is running on empty. Reloading with the LaBelle takes a pretty long time. Because the rifle doesn't have a safety catch, it means that instead, bullets aren't chambered the first time the gun is bolted forwards, so a second bolt is needed to lift the round into place. Added with the fact that a chambered cartridge is ejected automatically once the bolt is pulled back, even if it's not yet been fired, 
So by doing a tactical reload, you're going to have to eject one of the bullets already in the gun, and then put it back in at the end, giving the illusion that you're reloading up to 9 rounds overall. And this is basically all going to equate to a longer reload time. It can take nearly 8 seconds to reload the gun from empty, and because of its awkward mechanism, it almost takes 4 seconds just to reload a single round. And in the middle of a hectic battle, this can be a massive flaw, as you're going to be ridiculously vulnerable if you get caught out. So as far as the two variations go, statistically speaking, they're both going to function exactly the same as each other. The infantry variant can be unlocked by getting 50 kills with the Gewehr M95 infantry variant and by performing 20 spot flare assists. It doesn't have any optical attachments, but this means that you don't have to one scope after every shot to bolt the rifle, like you would with the sniper variant. And so this will allow you to keep your sights on the target and essentially take them down a bit quicker. The sniper variant on the other hand does have an optical scope equipped, which is going to give you a better view of your target in the distance. You will need to unscope after every shot however, and the scope is also going to omit some of that dreaded glare which is going to give away your position. It's also got a bipod equipped if you want to get rid of some of the scope's sway whilst in prone, and it should generally help you out a bit more if you want a clear view of what's ahead. The sniper variant can be unlocked by getting 5 headshots in a round with the Russian 1895 sniper, and by performing 10 periscope spot assists. So, in conclusion, the LaBelle Model 1886 plays out as more of a mid-range scout rifle, as it's going to hit the hardest between 50 and 87 metres. And the fact that it's got a pretty slow muzzle velocity is also going to make it a harder weapon to be accurate with against opponents further away. With it having a slightly quicker fire rate and a larger magazine capacity than average, these factors give the LaBelle a few advantages over some of the other rifles, as you'll be able to hold a few more bullets to gun down enemies with and do so slightly quicker. With that said, the LaBelle takes a bloody long time to reload with its awkward mechanics, and so you'll have to be patient and get used to chilling behind cover. It might seem a bit tricky to use, and its long reloads might put a few players off, but it can still be an effective scout weapon, offering some strong mid-range benefits that a lot of the other rifles don't. So that's just about it for another one guys, give me a like if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe for loads more content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.